Off the wall strength training for climbing does not have to be complicated. In fact, the big secret to getting stronger isn't doing a million fancy exercises, it's picking a functional routine that's easy for you to perform consistently and progress the difficulty with over time. So, pro climber and coach Dan Bell and I created this routine from some of the actual training programs we give our own clients, and we've had excellent responses so far. If you want to get started strength training for climbing but you have no idea where to start, then this video is for you. Our first exercise is one of the only ones we're going to do before climbing, and that is our finger training. We do this before climbing because it serves as an excellent warm up and because it allows us to perform the exercise at a high intensity rather than performing after climbing when our fingers are fatigued. This leads to a safer and more effective intervention. The exercise we're going to perform goes by several different names, but we're going to call them recruitment pulls. The best thing about these is their simplicity, requiring no equipment other than a single edge or a hangboard. Pick an edge and a grip that feels the most comfortable to you or suits your goals best. A 20mm edge with a chisel grip or half crimp is my recommendation if you're unsure. Anchor the edge to the ground with a rope, a carabiner, or even your own weight on top of it. You can also anchor it overhead if you prefer. Finally, all we're going to do is start pulling gently, building up to a maximum effort over the course of 5-8 to eight seconds, and then relax. Now, here's the interesting part. Rather than trying to perform this like a deadlift or by pulling from your shoulder, I personally like to focus on only pulling with my fingers as much as possible. This might take some getting used to, as our natural inclination is to yank with our arms, but isolating the fingers feels a lot less taxing on other muscles and may even allow us to get better engagement of the fingers in certain positions. Once you've done a single pull on both hands, you've completed one set. The first several sets of this exercise will simply be a warm up and can be performed at your own pace. Then, once you feel like your fingers are awake, perform 5-8 to eight working sets, resting about 3 minutes in between. And that's it! This type of training tends to be more auto-regulated than traditional hangboarding, so you can do it every session if you like. Of course, any new addition to your training needs to be implemented with care, so if you're worried about overdoing it, it's perfectly fine to start with just once a week. As a final note, if you're the data-oriented type like me and you want to see how hard you're actually pulling, a force gauge is a great tool as it allows you to see how strong your fingers are that day compared to previous days. While we rest between working sets of recruitment pulls, we have the option of using that time strategically to get our shoulders working. For the external rotator muscles in our shoulders, we'll do no monies with a resistance band. Control the motion the entire time and don't let the band go slack. Perform 8-12 to 12 repetitions per set for up to 3 total sets. We still have a little rest time to fill, so we're also going to throw in some gentle shoulder mobility work with stick dislocates. Perform for 30-60 to 60 seconds, keeping the motion dynamic, for up to 3 sets in total. If this is new to you, or you just don't have a stick around, you can also use a band. Now that we're done with the pre-climbing routine, it's time to climb. How you structure your climbing session is not the focus of this video, but if I had to give basic advice I would say, arrive at every session adequately recovered, try things at your limit, rest appropriately between attempts, and stop climbing when you feel a notable drop in performance. These are all key to getting the most out of your climbing session, just like using a high quality chalk is the key to maximizing friction on holds. That's why we're psyched that Rugne is the sponsor of this video. <laughs> Rugne. 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 Emil, Dan, and I have been testing out Magda's chalk for the last few months to see if it was something that we were willing to feature on the channel, and all three of us were pretty impressed by the quality. I personally don't really believe that there's like one best chalk out there because everyone has different preferences, skin types, and they climb in different conditions, so it's really important to find one that works well for you. Like a lot of people, we've been using Friction Labs for many years. But when we tried Magdest, we noticed that it sticks to our hands just as well, but it doesn't cake up in massive layers. I find it essentially to be a more efficient chalk for that reason, it's less messy, super sticky, and it's 100% pure magnesium carbonate, so it's free of additives if that's something that you care about. It's been working perfectly well for us, and the best part is that it's actually less expensive than other top tier chalks if you buy more than one bag at a time. After testing it out, we're happy to recommend such a quality product to our lovely viewers. If you use the link in the description, you'll be entered to win a year's supply of Magdust. 
Thank you, Magnus. Now that we're done climbing, it's time to do the rest of our strength training. For this routine, we're going to save time by doing two exercises back to back without resting in what we call supersets. There will be two supersets in total, one primary and one optional. Please note, there are many different ways to teach and learn good form for the exercises we're about to show, and this video isn't meant to be an in-depth guide on form, though we will be giving some basic guidelines. We're going to start off with a vertical pull push superset. If you only have the time or energy for one superset, this is it. Our first exercise shouldn't surprise anyone, and there's a good reason for that. Pull-up-like motion is the most ubiquitous movement in climbing, and thus proficiency is a major boon to climbers. If you can't yet do a bodyweight pull-up, there are many ways to work up to it. You can use resistance bands, cable machines, or simply perform the lowering portion of the pull-up only, also called negatives or eccentric pull-ups. All of these options can work just fine, but in my opinion, the best option is to use a pulley system. Unlike a resistance band, this allows you to perform your pull-ups with the exact same level of assistance throughout the range of motion. Whichever variation you choose, pick a hand position that is slightly wider than shoulder width and try to lead with a proud chest as if you're trying to touch your chest to the bar. This form will likely feel harder than a hollow body or rounded shoulder pull up, but it's my preferred method for climbers. Aim for five to eight repetitions at an intensity of about one to two reps in reserve. Two reps in reserve means you should have two reps left in the tank at the end of the set. If you could have done several more reps, the exercise is way too easy. If you just barely finish your final rep, it was too intense. To make things uber simple, every exercise in this routine will be five to eight reps with one to two reps in reserve. Of course, many climbers will be able to perform multiple pull-ups without assistance, in which case all the same guidelines apply here. You'll quickly find you actually need to add weight to keep you in the proper rep range, otherwise you'll end up doing sets of 12 or more, which is not what we're going for. By adding a few pounds every week or two, you should be able to stay in the five to eight rep range. Once you get to about 50% added body weight, switch to assisted one-arm pull-ups. Next, we'll be performing our vertical push, which will be a tricep dip. If you've never done these before, you may want to start on a solid bar. You can once again use a resistance band or cable machine to assist you if you can't do body weight reps, but as soon as you're able, I recommend switching to rings. Dips are great for training the pecs, triceps, and anterior deltoids. Practically speaking, dips will go a long way to leveling up your mantling ability, which is imperative if you plan on climbing outdoors. Dips on rings also increases activity of the rotator cuff muscles, which will increase your shoulder stability for dynamic climbing moves. If you feel any discomfort in your shoulders, decrease your total depth and or increase assistance. Aim for five to eight repetitions with one to two reps in reserve. Perform three rounds of this superset in total, resting three to five minutes in between. During your rest, perform your favorite stretch or my recommendation, 30 to 45 seconds of the frog stretch for that all important hip mobility. Our second optional superset will involve a horizontal pull push pair. This is an excellent supplement to the previous superset because horizontal pulling will help pull you into the wall and teach better scapular retraction. Meanwhile, horizontal pushing will continue to strengthen muscles that are useful for compression movements while also helping improve our general upper body strength and robustness. The first exercise of our second superset is a horizontal pull, which will accomplish with rows. There are many different types of rows, so you can choose the one that works best for you. For simplicity, we're going to do inverted rows. All you have to do is grab the rings, position your body at an angle, and pull your body towards your hands. We want to lead with a proud chest, feeling the squeeze in our back muscles at the end of the motion, rather than hunching over and pulling with just our biceps. To make this harder, simply increase your lean angle. As usual, we'll be aiming for five to eight reps with one to two reps in reserve. Our final exercise will be a horizontal push, which we'll accomplish with the bench press. There are actually many great ways to train horizontal pushing, but we've selected the bench press here as it's accessible in most gyms, it is approachable even for beginners, it is much more intuitive to progress than push-ups, and is easier to overload safely compared to a dumbbell press. In the past, we've said we tend to prefer dips over bench press, but since we've already done dips, we can now branch out. Everyone will have a slight preference on foot and lower back position here. It's okay or even beneficial to have a mild arch in your back, and it's also good to squeeze the shoulder blades together as you lower the bar. As usual, we'll be aiming for five to eight reps with one to two reps in reserve. Perform three rounds of the superset in total, resting three to five minutes in between. And perform your favorite stretch or my recommendation, the standing or sitting pancake stretch, reaching center, left, and right for about 30 to 60 seconds. 
I recommend you start by doing this routine once a week if you're brand new to training or twice a week if you already have some athletic background. You can eventually increase to three times a week, but only if you have the time and recovery capacity to do so without compromising your climbing sessions. Remember, the goal of this training is to supplement our climbing, not take away from it. If you find you're arriving at each session fatigued, you're either going way too hard or your recovery is compromised by some other factor. If you want to support this channel and get discounts on cool products, links to everything in this video will be in the description. If you're the type of person that doesn't have a lot of time to spend in the gym, you might be wondering how you can get all this training done in as little time as possible. In that case, check out our video on 10 science-based ways to get stronger in half the time. Until next time, train, climb, send, and repeat.